everyone and welcome to another Screaming Frog Quickfire Guide, this time on how to crawl JavaScript websites. When we say JavaScript websites, we mean a site that relies on client-side JavaScript to populate content and links. This might be a website that uses a JavaScript framework, such as Angular, React or Vue.js, or it might be a website that just uses JavaScript on certain sections or pages, for example, loading products on category pages is a pretty common one that we see. Now Google recommend using server-side rendering, pre-rendering or dynamic rendering as a stopgap rather than relying on a fully client-side approach. However, the purpose of this video is not to go into a lot of detail about JavaScript SEO, but more specifically, how to identify and crawl JavaScript websites with a client-side approach. By default, the SEO Spider will only crawl content and links in the raw HTML of a website. So if you go to crawl a website that uses JavaScript, such as the Angular.io website, which uses the Angular JavaScript framework, then only the home page and often JavaScript and CSS resources can be seen. The whole website isn't therefore crawled. And if you click on Outlinks at the bottom, it populates a lower window tab. You can see that there's no Outlinks. So there's no proper um, HTML anchor tags there and links out from the page for us to crawl. So and if you open this up in a browser, right click, view page source, you can see that there's no A links here as well. So there's no links in the raw HTML. However, if you view the rendered HTML via inspect elements, you can see that there are links within the rendered HTML. So this is why we launched JavaScript rendering functionality years ago, which means pages are crawled post JavaScript execution. We integrated the Chromium library for our rendering engine to emulate Googlebot as closely as possible. So for websites that rely on client side JavaScript, I'm going to run through seven simple steps to crawl them. Step number one, make sure you have the configuration set up to crawl resources and external links. So go to configuration, spider, and just ensure that all resource links here are ticked for crawl and store, and also external links as well. This is because pages are going to be rendered, and so to render them, obviously, you need to be able to crawl images, CSS, and JavaScript. And some of those resources may rely on external scripts or imagery, so we recommend keeping external links ticked and enabled as well. These are actually default settings, so a quick way to do this is just to go, simply go to File, Config, and Clear Default Config. Step two is configuring rendering to JavaScript. So go to Configuration, Spider, Rendering, and choose JavaScript. This means that the SEO Spider will use the headless Chrome browser and render the web pages and crawl links and content seen in the rendered HTML. Step three is configuring the window size, which is by default currently still set as desktop. However, Google have already moved to their mobile first index. Hence, if you're performing an audit, you can configure the SEO Spider to mimic a Googlebot for smartphones, which we recommend. You should now just be able to crawl the website. So you can see I've clicked start to crawl the angular.io website. And immediately you can already see that more URLs have already been found. There's some imagery in there and it should now start finding links as well. And if I click on HTML, we can see that there's a number of pages that are already being crawled. Step four is monitoring blocked resources. And for this, we'll have a look at a new example. So keep an eye on anything appearing under the block resource filter within the response codes tab. You can glance at the right hand overview pane over here instead of using the tab and filter at the top and see the numbers update in real time. So we can see some block resources here. If you're clicking to this, it immediately takes you to the relevant section. And we can immediately see that there are some images that are blocked by robots.txt. So obviously if it's JavaScript, CSS or images are blocked by robots.txt, they don't respond or they error, then this will impact rendering, crawling and indexing and should be resolved. You can overcome this in the crawl by going to configuration, robots.txt, settings, and choosing ignore robots.txt. Alternatively, you can adjust the robots.txt by going to robots.txt custom, and then removing any relevant disallow lines. For example, this one here for the images. Step five is simply to view the rendered pages and make sure that they're rendering as you would expect. To do this, you simply need to click on a URL on the top window pane, so I choose HTML pages and then click on the rendered page tab at the bottom. This will then show you a snapshot of the page as we crawled it. And as you can see here, images are not appearing and this is because they are blocked by robots.txt. And you can also see the block resources for the relevant page next to it. 
Step six is adjusting the Ajax timeout. So if you spot any problems in the render page screenshots and it isn't due to block resources or perhaps content such as page titles is not being populated, you may need to consider adjusting the Ajax timeout from five seconds. Another clue is if response times are over five seconds here. So if you go to configuration, spider rendering, you can see the Ajax timeout of five seconds. This means the SEO spider waits for five seconds for the page to load before it takes its snapshot and crawls the page, the content and the links and obviously we recommend that all pages load within five seconds but if they're not and they're struggling to load in that time then you can increase this Ajax timeout to perhaps 10 seconds or 15 seconds. The recrawl will take a little bit longer however in reality Google is more flexible than five seconds that we use. They adapt based upon how long a page takes to load content considering things like network activity and things like caching also play a part. Step seven is comparing raw and rendered HTML. So you may wish to store and view HTML and rendered HTML within the SEO Spider when working with JavaScript to help debug some scenarios. If you go to configuration, spider, extraction, and scroll down and tick store HTML and store rendered HTML, this will save the HTML within the SEO Spider. I'm just gonna call a new example here as well. So this will populate the lower window of view source tab down here. And this will enable you to compare the differences and be confident that critical content or links are present within the DOM. So in this example here, this particular page uses JavaScript to load on these products. You can see that this is JavaScript straight away. <clears throat> if I right click and just copy the address, and then search for it in the raw HTML over on this left hand side which says original HTML and if I do the same over here within the rendered HTML straight away I can see a difference and I can see and be confident that the product link is within the rendered HTML. You should also be able to see this within the outlinks as well. That's everything on crawling JavaScript websites.